I'm a fan of smart assistants. I mean, just like everyone else, I'm a tad bit lazy. I mean, I'm not even fully dressed right now. I'm wearing basketball shorts. It's amazing that I don't have to pull up my phone, unlock it, open an app, and then play some music. Instead, I can just go, hey Susan, okay George, or Alexis, play some music. Okay, not this music. This isn't my music, not this. Anyway, assistants add some nice functionality, but I've had this Google Home Mini for over half a year now. Do I think it's worth it? Would I redo this purchase? Well, we'll find out with a little six month recap. When I got the Google Home Mini, I tried to incorporate it into my life as much as possible. I went and bought a Chromecast so I can easily and lazily turn my monitor into a makeshift TV of sorts. And I occasionally played music through the Mini. I let it tell me lame jokes, I let it tell me the weather, and I use it to send things over to the Chromecast. So for the most part, everything works just as intended. The Google Assistant is pretty good and it responds to most of my requests. Sure, it's not completely conversational, but it's pretty good for a, for a robot. But that's not what you wanted to hear. What you wanted to hear was what it was like living with this thing. Well, I can tell you there have been really good things and really bad things. When you look past the positives that every review says, you start to see the not so great and the kind of bad things about it. Again, the negatives I'm about to say are things that pertain to my experience with the Google Home Mini and not the Google Home, not the Amazon Alexa, and definitely not Apple's Siri or HomePod. It's just the Home Mini because that's the device I used. So the Google Home Mini has this really obnoxious habit of eavesdropping into all my conversations. Now, I know that's kind of its job, it's waiting for the trigger word, but sometimes I won't say the trigger word. And It'll just butt in and tell me that it can't find what I'm talking about. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Well, of course you can't find what I was talking about. I wasn't talking to you. Randomly, it would just activate without me using its trigger word and start speaking to me and yelling at me. It's the most annoying thing in the world when you're enjoying a show and it's getting to the best part or when you're on the phone or when you're talking to someone. Those are all important situations where this thing has randomly started talking to me. That's not the only negatives, however. It occasionally would just disconnect from my Wi-Fi and I can't fix it using the app and the only way to absolutely fix it is to unplug it and, well, plug it back in again. Recently, however, I decided to factory reset the whole thing and it hasn't done that disconnecting thing once since then. So that's good, maybe that was it. There have been pretty great moments with this Google Home Mini as well. Once I got the wording to my request right, it rarely got what I was trying to get across wrong. It behaves as well as I could hope from the thing. I have it paired up to my Chromecast and LifeXZ light strip and using the Google Home Mini I can even control the intensity of the light coming from the light strip. After going through all the smartphone setup processes of course, that part's a bit of a pain in the butt. The audio quality sounds alright from the Google Home Mini and the thing can hear you from a decent distance away, but the further you get, the harder it is to understand what you are saying. If you're in the same room, however, you're good to go. Now onto the conclusion. Looking at this device, would I purchase this one again? Well, after six months of owning this and understanding how these smart home speakers are in general, I may have just opted for the bigger one because I wanna use it more as a speaker. But for someone who's just looking to use it as just a smart home assistant, nothing else, or just mild bits of audio here and there, you can't go wrong. This thing's only $50. But what really sells it is how often these things go on sale. And when they're on sale, they're such a good price. Bluetooth speaker, $40, $30? Why not? If you're someone looking for a no frills approach to a smart home assistant, then this is a good idea. If you're looking for something that can also double as a Bluetooth speaker, I suggest looking at its bigger brother or even some other offerings by other companies. Anyway guys, what do you think? Do you own a smart home assistant? Does it fit your needs perfectly or would you have preferred to pick up a different one? Leave that all down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and well, maybe subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.